Hey everyone, it's Loie, and today we're going to be talking about Blush 101. Um, I am kickstarting these Makeup 101 videos back off, and I really want to get back into the swing of beginner's makeup lessons, so today I wanted to talk about blush. I feel like this is kind of straightforward, and I didn't exactly know if it deserved its own video. However, this is something I learned very recently, and it's completely changed the look of my makeup. It's completely changed the entire look of my face. Blush is one of my favorite makeup products. I know so many girls say that, um, that it is is their favorite makeup product. I think it's the most fun to apply. It's, um, I don't know, the most classic in my opinion. It completely changes your entire face once you have your blush on. So that is why I'm dedicating an entire video to Blush 101. And I'm just going to be talking to you guys about a new method of application that you may not have already heard about um, that's just a lot more practical and a lot more appropriate for perhaps a slightly older face. So we're talking, you know, out of your teen years, um, you know, out of like 14, 15, 16, whatever, when you want to start looking more grown up as opposed to perhaps really baby faced and round faced. Um, so I'm really just gonna go ahead and jump straight into the demonstration because I don't feel like there's a whole lot else I can say without showing you that first. So here is my new kind of method to applying blush. I've gone ahead and done the majority of my makeup, my foundation routine and everything like that. Um, I also just went ahead and did my contour. That's one thing with blush that I highly recommend is going ahead, doing your contour before you put on blush. I think that once you put blush on top of that, it really helps to blend things out. Normally, my kind of layering routine is I will do bronzer or contour and then blush and then a highlight um, because it all seems to kind of blend each other out and just look a lot more natural. The blush I'll be using today is from MAC. It was their bite of an apple blush and any blush obviously will do. This is just for demonstration purposes and I wanted to do something a tiny bit brighter so you guys could really see the technique on camera. The brush I will be using today is from Sonia Kashuk and it's from her like premier like black brush line and it has her angled like blush brush um, and as you can see the reason I love this so much is it is quite fluffy so it's not super thin when you put it next to a normal angled brush I think um, you can tell it's just a lot fatter and it's a lot denser it packs color on a lot more nicely and you don't get quite a um, as much of a, like a blotchy application, but I like an angled blush brush for this better than an actual round blush brush. Sometimes I prefer this if I don't necessarily want my face to be super sculpted. Um, this just gives a much rounder and perhaps a bit of a softer application, whereas this is much more controlled. I just prefer this most of the time. Sometimes I'll reach for the other one, but it just depends on the day. So what I will do is I will obviously just go ahead and put some blush on that brush. So I learned this not too terribly long ago, but normally I would just take my blush and I would smile to find the apples in my cheeks and I would start right here um, where my cheek is kind of at its chubbiest and I would work my way back. Now, the reason that's not good is it actually makes your face look a lot rounder, um, whereas most of us want to have kind of a more sculpted face. We want, you know, really prominent cheekbones. We want our face to look slimmer and more just intense. So um, I was about to dip that into my bronzer. I'm really glad that I didn't. Um, what I will do instead is I'll still smile. That still definitely does help. But if you can see, um, if you follow the natural kind of arch of your brow, where your brow naturally goes at its highest, take your blush right there, and that's where you're going to want to start it. That's where it's going to be the most intense. And you're going to just smile and kind of pat that on. And of course, you don't have to smile. It, you know, whatever is easiest for you. And that way, the most color isn't actually on the chubbiest part of your cheeks. Um, this gives the face, obviously, a much more sculpted look. Like I said, you can still definitely bring some into that part, just not as much as perhaps would be back here. So I'm just blending that down into my contour and kind of back into the hairline. And as you can see, that just gives the face so much more definition. It looks so much more sculpted and lively than the other part of my face. And I think it just looks so much better. Um, my face doesn't look as brown. And I don't know, this application of blush just totally changed my life when I learned it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that to the other side. So that's actually 
actually it. Pretty neat, huh? I think it looks a lot better than the typical, you know, blob it right on the very biggest part of your cheeks. Um, and if you do feel like you maybe overdid it, if you got it too low, you can just take your brush um, that maybe you did your foundation with, if it has a little bit of extra product, even if it doesn't, and you can just kind of dab along the outer portions of that blush to really blur it out and make it less intense. I recommend if you brought it too far down into the contour to actually take your contouring brush and just blend that one more time. And I think that that definitely kind of helps to redefine the bronzer area without getting it too stark because you're not putting any additional product on it or anything. I hope you guys found that helpful um, and that it really kind of showed you the difference between applying it on the very apples of your cheeks, as so to speak, um, as, you know, starting maybe a little bit further back on the cheeks. Clearly today I use a matte blush. This is from MAC. It's Bite of an Apple and it's just a very bright, vibrant pink. This is not the only blush option that you have. You can use a shimmery blush. I like to use matte blush because that is where I have the majority of my skin issues. I have pores, I have hyperpigmentation and acne scarring, um, and I just find that that's where I don't like to draw a lot of attention. That being said, I still will wear a shimmery blush sometimes. Um, let me see if I have one on hand. If you do have issues with skin pigmentation, something with minimal shimmer is going to be best. So something where the shimmer is almost undetectable. This is from MAC as well. It is called Stunner. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. It's such a light pale pink. Um, but something with minimal glitter, gl minimal chunks. Uh, nothing like NARS Orgasm that's super heavy and pigmented. If you are looking for a super youthful glow, go all out on that shimmery blush. That is going to bring so much life into your face and make you look so healthy and awake and dewy and perfect. Um, and yeah, that's... That's basically all that you have for blush. You also have cream blushes and you have stains and things like that. Those are things I tend to steer clear from um, just because, again, I have that kind of scarring on my cheeks, so I feel like that kind of draws more attention to that and it kind of messes up any foundation I had on previously. However, I can definitely show you guys a cream blush video if you would like to see it. That would be a totally different subject in itself for me. But that is going to be it for this first kind of blush 101 video, and I hope you all enjoyed and that you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And until my next video, I love you girls so much, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!